to face. Hi, Chris. I didn't know you knew Blake. Hey, Dale. Yeah, him and I uh, connected uh, earlier this summer, and yeah, we uh, I, I made him buy me some beers. And good, uh, good have for you, <laughs> made him. We we arm wrestled for it. And good morning, Chris. Good to, good to see <laughs> you, buddy. And obviously, I lost. I mean, that, that's the thing. I lost. Anyway, hey, hey, I'm going to let well, you this, guys uh, continue and on. And we're continuing to, to give to you, Chris. You're a guest <laughs> on Face. You know what? I'm going to give me a second. I'll pull up a picture of Chris and I. Let me. It's let up me, there. Oh, huh? oh, okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll find I'll there. find a little picture of us uh, right. in a second. But you guys have a great interview. Thanks, man. So, uh, Chris, if you want to share the screen, you know where it's at on Zoom, or you yeah. just want to talk. You want to... Uh, let's. Uh, why don't I share my screen? Okay. So uh, Blake told us a little bit about your background. I went on your Twitter stream, and uh, you were in the service. Uh, was it then that you started becoming interested in the markets, or prior, uh, or after? Uh, uh, well, I was. No. I always. You know, like any story, uh, I knew I was a stock market genius when I was in junior high or something like that. Wow. I just had this calling. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> every uh, every every interview starts out that way, I think. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd always been pretty much excited about getting involved into the markets. I had no idea what I was, uh, what that meant. I knew I wanted to be a trader. I didn't realize that when I went on all these interviews at places like those of you might remember Payne Weber. Oh, yeah. uh, some of the some of the in the late '90s during that bull market. As I got out of the Marine Corps, I uh, I was like, okay, yeah, let's get right in and let's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the Wall Street. I'm in. And I didn't realize being a broker wasn't being a trader. No. And how did you <laughs> so, like making cold calls? I never made it that far because on the interviews they basically <laughs> said, you know, okay, how, you know how many how how fast can you do 200 calls a day? And I was yeah. like, I don't know, I'll be busy buying S&Ps or I'll be busy, uh, you know, day trading Broadcom or something. And so never really made it that far. But uh, like Dale, I got into prop trading actually uh, back okay. then in, in the late 90s. And that was my beginning. Okay. All right. So are you self-taught? Uh, do you have a, Did you have any mentors or books that you read that, you know, helped you along the way to make a breakthrough or two? Yeah, um, <laughs> I I was lucky enough to start out in a prop firm and get on a prop desk with some some experienced traders. And from the very beginning, they really taught me to just stop focusing on the news, stop focusing on the hysteria, and find some some repeatability, something that you can see often enough, you can structure risk around it, and then. Uh, you know, statistically use that as an edge over time. I didn't fully understand it as a former Marine uh, right out of the infantry. It was more of just kind of like, yay, I'm not doing stupid things there anymore. And so um, I'll, I'll share my screen here a little bit, by the way. But, um, oh, okay. but yeah, that. it was it, the first book I ever got was, was somebody uh, before I even got out. There you go. Thanks. Was uh, <laughs> Dummy's Guide to Wall Street or something like that. Uh, and okay. at least it gave me the vernacular to understand what I was looking for, what I was, you know, what options were, what bonds were and what stocks were. And then, um, you know, really the big, there, there's two great books that helped me along the way. Uh, Dr. Van Tharp's um, uh, uh, System Trading Style uh, and his book, Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom and uh, the uh, Super Traders books are all very, uh, very good on uh you know, teaching you how to just find a system and stick with systems. And then Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone, uh, both really oh, yeah. pivotal books, very, yeah. very great books that got me uh, out of trying to pontificate long-term, you know, world-changing things with my little, you know, whatever, retail <laughs> uh, trade station account or whatever it was when I was, you know, in the beginning and, and you know, trying to like predict bond yields or something like that, which, which didn't, doesn't move the needle right at that, in that level. So, okay. Um, so you, did, uh, so I'm going to unshare and you okay. could share and, uh, let's take a look at your setup and, uh, tell us, uh, what you're using to, you know, be actionable in the market. Well, okay. Let me get the different one. I got the, here we go. There we go. Okay. Bunch of squiggly lines, I assume. 
uh, everybody sees those. Okay. Uh, so what we have here, this, as I just got done saying, uh, <laughs> long-term uh, thinking and all that, uh, now I'm going to pull up a long-term thinking chart. One of the things that's most interesting to me right now is the the overwhelmingly bearish uh, environment on just on on equities on on pretty much everything right now, and it's it's not a it's not a like oh this sucks it's not like the 2008 time frame, uh, which which was you know for those of us that lived through it you know a lot more um, a lot more challenging than it is right now I would say right now it's just everybody's just kind of like yeah we're in a bear market everybody is around here we're no longer uh uh you know bull market ragers now we're like professional traders we're still around and everybody kind of has this agreement that we're going to go lower that the markets are going to spend the next six or or you know 24 months going down um and that it mostly i think the thing that everybody is 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 biggest on is that it's it's going to be a straight line i think 3000 is something on the s p for example that everybody seems to be really uh really stuck on yeah. and Pre-COVID highs. There you go. Everybody's there. And look, I'm not saying no, and I'm not saying yes. But what I'm what I'm looking for is I'm looking for ways to take action in the middle. Like you know, we're we're traders. We're not. I'm not. Uh, you know, somebody who Bloomberg would find super interesting to come in and talk about a day trade on on uh, crude dropping below eighty or something like that. Um, so you don't do minutes. it on a weekly chart, I would bet. Well, so what I do, the my idea, definitely not actionable, <laughs> but yeah. I start everything with uh, top down as you would, okay. uh, and I and I get things into what I call market regimes, and and there's five versions of the market regime. So I start with uh, it's directional. You've got bullish, you've got bearish, and you've got sideways. So three okay. easy directions, uh, and then you have high volatility and low volatility. So. That makes five different directions, and each one of those represents a. Uh, I use it as a pull it up here. Actually, um, I use it in a way to uh, just identify. It's like a calendar. The idea is that you would be, you know, if I said, "Hey, Dale, let's meet up in Montana," you'd be like, "Chris, I love Montana. Let's go." Key question, sir: What day of the year would that be? That's that's yeah. a super important fact in Montana, right? If I said. January, you would not need your, you know, board yeah. shorts, your flip flops, or anything. It's big coat. Same thing here in in Arizona, right? If I said yeah. January, you'd be like, oh, that's a nice time of year. If I said July, you'd be like, Shh, yeah. forget it, yeah, <laughs> forget <know>. it. <laughs> um, and so it's the same sort of thing. I I use uh, statistics, volatility based and directional based statistics, which is not really hard. It's a previous 100 period average change of the previous day to today's close. And it just averages it over the last 100 days. And that gives you, uh, it's this histogram on the bottom here, that gives me this direction, right? If it's if it's rising, that it, you can see that it's lagging, but it's also rising along with the market. And then it has ranges and those ranges um, coincide with different market conditions, kind of, you know, summer, uh, fall, winter, spring yeah. type uh, comparison. Right. And seasons. so different seasons. And so when you get to extreme levels, that's when you get these blow off tops and big spike bottoms. And those sort of things tend to be reversals. Now, just because they happen doesn't mean they're reversal. If we look at my chart here, this blue area, this is what I consider bull volatile. So it's the most volatile time of a bull market. And that's usually categorized in the, the most obvious times are, you can see how it's just up or up or up or up or up. It's just, just up yeah, or it straight. It parabolic. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly what it is, parabolic. So it's a requirement for a major market top. But as you can see here, just because it went there doesn't mean it was, was a major market top, but it is it a requirement. It was a top, not the top. It's just, hey, it's winter time. It doesn't mean that because it's December 22nd, I believe, uh, that we're going to get a major blizzard on the exact day that winter starts. It's just that, hey, it's winter time. It's going to be cold. We're probably going to have some snow. It's probably going to be bad. So it's it just puts the environment in place. And it what that does is that removes probably like five other type of environments that you would be uh, that you would be looking for, right? You're not looking at a major. Uh, 
you, you know, you're not looking for markets to just kind of go sideways at these. What season these. do you think we're in right now, Chris? So, okay. So the lagging indicator says we're in a neutral season. So all the okay. volatile bearishness is yeah. out of there, at least in, in, you know, it doesn't mean that it can't happen, but it's just very likely that we're not going to be in such a uh, volatile bear thing. And there's one other piece of information on that. The 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 times that we've actually been hit a, a bear vol, so the the complete opposite of this, yeah. Uh, in the last 25 years, is less than 20 days. So, what characterizes a major market bottom is the bear volatile thing, which is indicative of what we saw in COVID in in the late part of March of 2020, where you have 10, 11 percent uh, up and down days. So yeah. the, those are things that that typically indicate a major market bottom. So we haven't had is that there, yet. Let, let me ask you, Chris, uh, is there anything in your indicators that would leave um, open the possibility? Because, you know, I was talking about that, uh, just a downtrend line from the all time high on the daily um to you know we'll come in around 4100 okay right there. is there anything in your work that says it could end up breaking out over 4100 and being for a retest or new highs it's it's absolutely open so a couple of things are open here right this this isn't definitive for sure this just gives us okay, okay what do we look for what we're looking for when we're in a, a the red stuff here and negative yeah. on the number line what we're well, looking you see for is trend line the whole world's watching that I, you, as you said it, I just threw it up there right now. And yeah, I was like, well, yeah. that's, yeah, exactly. It's super obvious. Yeah. Um, what I've seen is when you're, okay, we put new lows in over here, right? right. And then, it, but this went higher. So volatility was declining as price was going lower. That That's indicative of a, like a very calm bear market. That's not indicative of a of a capitulative that's why VIX market. people never got paid that's right <laughs> that's exactly right, right. Yep. okay that's everybody's waiting for that 60 70 VIX right yeah um <laughs> and and then you know last week we had the liest, uh, largest uh short QQQ uh move in in history and that came on here, here's where price action comes into it all of this right here this big bull bar was negated yeah. and it's just ugly, right? It's really ugly. Every down day is really ugly. But what happened? It it failed. The best looking cell setup right here. This yeah. was like, okay, we're going to 30, we're finally going to 3,000. That's what this looked like right here. What happened? Yeah. Boom. That inflation number, I think, was a seven sigma event. Right. Yeah. It nobody That's was an earthquake, man. It, it was an earthquake and 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 uh you know, right there, we saw it in, this would have been uh, right here where this happened. Boom, comes right in. Yeah. This is the dollar. This is the the major uh, currency pairs uh, with the dollar yeah. on the on yeah. the receiving end. Um, it all came in and just changed everything right there. Yeah. So what we see in this environment, and this is very indicative of what happened in uh, after March 23rd and into April of 2020, was the best looking cell setups in the world were failing. And okay. that is all it took. I got long and my crew, we all got long April 5th and we bought and we bought and we bought and we bought because what kept happening was this exact situation was it's the bearish thing in the world. Boom. Most bearish thing in the world. Boom. It's just the best looking cell setups keep failing. And then were you wearing a mask when you were hitting the button? <laughs> <laughs> Man, and were was you spraying like alcohol on your... I was in Arizona. We did, we were we were Oh, that's we right. You guys did. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, why is everybody freaking out? That. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but see the <laughs> the bars the bars in Tempe just jammed, right? So Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. All right. So yeah. you saw it back then. Does it just have like a similar vibe to you? It has a very similar vibe to it right now, but you know, yeah. what wasn't what we don't have now is that crazy uh, frenzic uh, frenzy that we had there, you know, 10 and 11% up and down days, uh, fed intervention, you know, policy intervention, 
uh, everything was was really hot during that period of time. We're certainly you can't say the same thing right now. It's kind of it was like there was a midterm and it kind of like there, there was an election. What did something you know like there's very little uh, other than than Twitter and FTX uh, happening. Like nothing's really uh, nothing's really crazy. And then and then you look at something like the Dow and just how powerful it has been, where you know. S and P and and Nasdaq are are so much more tech heavy, so much more uh, uh, you know levered. These this one is just uh, it, it just continues. The Dow just keeps moving higher, and it is actually in. You see, it's we've turned green here. Uh, that indicates bull quiet market regime, and a bull quiet market regime goes further and lasts longer than people expect. So, okay. painting that yeah. picture, I you know. I see absolutely your question that yes, the market, uh, most people are off sides. Most people are, are cool with this. And as you, you mentioned on the, you know, the, the S&P, that trend line, they're probably, yeah. yeah, we're probably up here and they're looking to get puts in this area yeah. or get short. Yeah. Um, I, uh, everyone, you know, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the other unusual thing about this environment right now right. is the people that are still in it are experienced people. So the the hubris you used the term earlier, yeah. Uh, I think is is probably going to actually work against. It could, I should say, it could work against people in this environment because everybody the the players this time are way more experienced than they were say twelve months ago in the market. Okay, all right. So uh, tell us about your business model and um, your services. And you know, I was on your website. Could put it up again, Chris. Sure. And I see that um, you develop your own EA or um, your own models. Um, I think that's what I saw there. Yeah, systems. yeah. Something about systems. Um, I am I am a systematic trader, and okay. and and so at Pollinate Trading, pollinatetrading.com. Okay. Uh, I after so I was with MacroOps, uh, my buddy Alex at MacroOps until right until the the pandemic. And uh, we broke off, and because I I'm a lot more aggressive trader than uh, you know macro ops are more of a, a longer term position trader. So we just kind of like said let let's separate it a little bit. And so I started that um, pretty much from the hospital when my son was born, and it was uh, you know a fun time, <laughs> COVID, <laughs> uh, yeah. COVID in the hospital, and. Yeah. Um, and so what we do is we're very systematic trading. So the corner of everything is the trading lab, which is a, a, a Slack group. And we live stream during the trading day. Okay. I'm all, still seeing the S&P chart. So you oh. may have to reshare to get your. Do you want me to put yours up? Should I just do mine? No, just put your website up. There. Gotcha. Okay. So this is my website, pollinatetrading.com. Okay. That's, that's me in the corner okay. up here. Okay. Uh we have a number of uh, courses. So for for what we do, everything's systematic, and we want to have statistical data on our um, on any trade, any system we want, anything we want to get into. We won't just go and say, "Yeah, we're hoping for that four thousand uh, S and P." So I'm going to buy some calls right here, you know, or I'm going to I'm going to go long S and Ps or spies or something like that. Like there, there has to be a systematic approach so that we can wrap risk around it, take our, you know, make sure that our risk reward is set up. And if, you know, and, we have uh, like I'm, a, I'm assuming that the more confluence of different pieces of your puzzle coming together builds a case for a strong, a more compelling um, narrative or trade. Yeah, for, right. for trade, for sure. Narrative, uh, you know, at, like any, most traders were, our win rate rates around 50% uh, okay. fluctuates above and below that as it should be. But if, you know, if your risk reward is higher than 50%, you know, one-to-one -one, uh, that's an amazing business. And that's really what we teach our traders is to take the ideas of, of hey, I want to learn how to do run a business, not yeah. yeah, that don't yell at your computer and, and, you know, just take random shots at the market, turn it into a real business that generates revenue that is predictable, repeatable revenue, uh, assuming you have you know expectancy that is positive and you take enough shots on shots on goal for, for lack of a better term, that you can exploit that uh, thing. And so we have a couple of, you know, 
the systems mastery course teaches you how to build your own system. But okay. for a lot of people, you know, they just want the systems already built. Right. So we have a day trading system. We have a momentum swing trading system. And unlike what everybody beast. tells you, <laughs> swing beast, and, and what everybody tells you about earnings season, we actually figured out how to exploit earnings season by buying into the earnings announcement, whereas most people's advice is to sell around earnings because you never know what's going to happen. We, you know, it's actually quite easy once you figure out the the footprints that are being left. So, um, wow. yeah, dark, those are dark pool stuff or what? Foot, foot no, no, or... it's it's really price action based. It's really wow. price action based, but it's 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 it starts from being in that the market regime, the appropriate market regime. Got it? You know, the weather has to be right. For okay. for example, in the winter, you I can like see it. footprints in the snow pretty easily, right? You're really a meteorologist, aren't you, Chris? <laughs> huh? I'm a rocket surgeon <laughs> or something. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, it it really was a a pleasure talking to you and get and meeting you, and um, certainly I could tell I've talked to a lot of people in ten minutes. Someone, you know has the acumen and it seems like you have the temperament and you put in the work. How long have you been doing this now, Chris? Uh, this is my 23rd year. Okay. All right. So uh, true veteran, uh, still doing it, um, right, you know, uh, going through adversity at times and, uh, you know, always still on the mission. So I could tell it was, you know, uh, what would you say? the biggest lesson you learned um, during those years that you could pass on to people? If there's, you know, one or two things they have to either psychologically or uh, methodology that they should consider integrating into their plan. Yeah, I, it starts with one single setup. It, you, you have to have one that is it. If, if you don't have okay. one single setup wow. that you can repeat over and over, there's no sense in having another one and another one and another one. And if you don't have enough information on that one, you don't have one yet. And it only so, takes one, doesn't it? It only takes, it's exactly right. It only takes one. Yeah, absolutely. One that works. And so uh, then what becomes your enemy when you have that one is not having the patience to wait for it again. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely Does it sound Get like outside. i've been doing I, that that i've done <laughs> that i have one but i at times i i don't wait for that one every so that, trader you know that that is really a great statement um i haven't heard that from anybody it only takes one setup that you can depend on that's a high probability for you and well that's a pearl Okay, you right, you win you. the Pearl Award, Chris, and ah, lovely. You know, when you, you get through an interview with me, you become my trading warrior brother. So, I'm oh. rooting for you and and what you guys do, and would love to have you back down the road. I'd love to be on. It was great uh, chatting with you, Dale, and and yeah. meeting you and hearing you guys chat. As a, yeah. Kate, you know, I get chances too from time to time. So, so, I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah. So follow Chris on Twitter at Chris D Macro. And uh, check out his website. Uh, definitely could be uh, a great part of your intelligence gathering for the market. And we'll talk uh, maybe next time we're talking, we're above that trend line. I think we will. Yeah. Yeah. I think for a uh, while right. anyway. For a while anyway. So, Chris, uh, happy holidays coming up. Have a great trading season. And thank you for sharing your journey and your work with us today. Hey, thank you very much, sir. And, oh, okay. and giving me, a, you know, confirming what I believe for a long time. You know, I knew guys, Chris, that never left the cattle pit. They didn't roam uh -huh. into the hog pit and the belly pit and the currencies. They knew one market like the back of their hand, and they, ne and they never had to be a diversified trader. It oh, only really? takes one. Yeah, yeah. That's You know what I mean? I, it, I do, and I know those guys too. I yeah. know, came across a few of those guys. They're, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't know what a they wouldn't know what a yield was or anything. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. They just trade the flow. So, uh, Chris, thanks very much for being with us. A great way to cap off the week. Good hunting, yeah. buddy. Uh, thank you very much, Dale. You have a wonderful weekend. All right, Chris Dover, everyone.
check them out, follow them on Twitter at Christy Macro. And thank you, everyone. Uh, hope that we were able to, you know, give you some added value this week. The way to say thank you is to, you know, try the trading program or become a member. Shabbat Shalom, Amira. And above all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone Monday. Thank you. People are thanking you, Chris. So have a great weekend, everyone. Adios. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.